All right, boys, we start Saturday in Vancouver. Big game for the Calgary Flames. <sighs> Not ideal. Do nothing, Vancouver. Late second period. Canucks power play, but here come the Flames. He's full value, boys. Coleman with Lindholm. Coleman to the net. Lindholm. Oh. Missing most of the season, boys, but Thatcher Demko looked a okay on Saturday, robbing Lindholm there, who eventually would score in the third on a beautiful three-way passing play. What about Mason McDonald? Did he make any glove saves? He didn't see this. Actually, never mind. Jeez. It's a bit, it's a bit of a shot. Is he at development camp this year? 13th year? Uh, he, he also had that save off his arm where the puck landed on the net late and then robbed Kadri in overtime on a two-on-one chance with a beautiful pad save sliding left to right. That one might have, weirdly, might have been a nicer save than that one. Yeah, that's too highlight reel. My goodness gracious. Yeah, and so the Flames might not have had 15 high dangers, but there's two that feel like sure goals right there. They lose in a shootout. I was calling for three. I, I was calling for a penalty. He threw a stick. This go over time, it's like, yeah. it, that's got to be a penalty. penalty I think shot. the shot from Kadri was so hard. It's just the vibration Maybe. set it flying. Yeah. Come on. Hang on to your stick, Demko. You sieve. Cheater. Cheater. That's why the Flames didn't draft him. That's right. Throws a stick too much. Tough loss. Uh, there was a set of highlights you didn't get to see from Vancouver. The Flames only get one point. The Canucks, too. It hurts everyone. It hurts the Bedard. It hurts the sure does. playoffs. Uh, but there's one thing we can all agree on. Canucks fans and Flames fans. It's the Canucks annual Players Dog Race at the intermission. Don't poo on the ice, please. The Players Dog Race. Looks like oh, BB's in the lead. BB. BB. Zeus oh. and Emma. Who's going to win it? Crossing lanes. Emma won last year, I believe. And those are all the, the wags and the dogs of the Canucks. we got the 3 2 win. This one guy. Jeez. It's an Orov's dog. What's he doing back there? Jeez. Looks like your dog. It does look like your dog. Whose dog is it? Mm. Yeah. Got two names, two dogs, living with Boom. Who won? They did some heats, but I oh. believe. Uh, well, I don't care. I just wanted to show dogs running on the ice. <laughs> Screw that. Let's move along. Today, Shoddy, shoddy reporting. The Calgary Mark. chapter of the Professional Hockey Writers Association named. Michael Backlund, the nominee for the Calgary Flames for the Bill Masterton Award, which, uh, what is it, uh, Perseverance in the Field of Excellence? No, it's Perseverance Sportsmanship and Dedication to the Sport of Hockey. Weren't you nominated? Congrats there was. Yeah. to Michael Backlund, who turned 34 last month. Uh, arguably one of his best seasons in the NHL, 34. That contract when they signed it, geez, how's he going to age? Been a great year for him. He's outplayed, well, all but one other center. You can make the case he's been their most consistent center this year. And seems like a worthy nominee. The only guy that got you think of, like, man, Chris Tanev, the things he has to do to get on the ice and when he's gone through surgery last offseason. But uh, it's backland for this year. Yeah, there's really, when you think, there's not been a whole lot of strife for these players this year. I mean, we haven't up. seen Shillington, but other than that, yeah. They're pretty darn Maybe That's what they need is a little bit more adversity. <sighs> I don't know about that. Haven't they missed any games, know. healthy all year. Maybe you're just not trying hard hit enough. Hit by a truck on a scooter. That was yeah, what about that? Yeah. What about that? Yeah. You had Brett yeah, what calling about that? the team out. That did a lot of adversity. Oh, that there. would really suck. Had to turn their season around. Mm -hmm. yeah. By the way, 10-4 and 3 in their last 17. I know you. 10-4, good buddy. Good. It's, it's a 676 points percentage. It's quite good. It's just not good enough. You wish it started sooner, that 676 pace. Then you'd be in a playoff spot, not needing a lot of help and to run the table in your last two games. And even if you do. We saw it already. Here's the West standings. Flames can max out at 94 points. Jets have three left. They sit at 91 and hold a tie break. So, yeah, three points gets them in in their final three games. We talked about it. It's the Sharks tonight, the Wild tomorrow, and the Avs on Thursday. Nashville, rather irrelevant if they don't get a win tonight, but they've been beating a lot of teams higher than the standings in the Calgary Flames of late. Beat division-leading Vegas in overtime. Division leading Carolina at home. I expect a hardworking, tough Nashville yeah, team at the Dome tonight because that's where they've been. I'm guessing it'll be a low scoring affair. This is not going to be a tap in for the Flames. Good plan, Ander. Stay tuned for my Betway bets of the day. Okay, very good. Let's move to uh, some action yesterday. Uh, the Bruins had a good day. Uh, David Pasternak specifically, mm -hmm. 60 goals. First time since Phil Esposito a Bruins scored. 60. That's a lot, Red. That's a lot of goals. 60. And see, if it wasn't for McDavid, yeah. that'd be a holy shit. And I, just to get under the skin of uh, Oilers fans in the group chat, I was just, in a non-McDavid environment, this is one of the greatest totals we've seen in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not just tapping in back door. 
power play goals with McDavid and stuff. 60 is a shitload. They also get their 63rd win of the year. That's an NHL record. No, the 71 Canadians didn't get to play overtime and three on three and all that stuff. But holy shit, this Bruins team, uh, it feels like they've had such a good regular season. Never mind President's Trophy stuff. If they lost in the final, it would feel like a disappointing outcome here. Never mind getting through that gauntlet of a division, whoever comes out of the Metro. Uh, they've been sensational. There's your look at these standings. Look at the gap between them and the second best team. Jesus. <laughs> and Toronto's, I, we've had a pretty good year, all things being considered. Toronto's like, yeah, we might get to, you know, uh, 111 points. Not enough. Is that an 819 win percentage? That's ridiculous. And the goal differential, plus 124. Ooh. Very good at hockey, these uh, fellows. NHL schedule. Let's take a peek tonight. There's some big ones out there. Do you want to put on your teal, Rhett? Because yeah. I suggest you should. Okay. Last time you put on your teal, everyone said, Rhett, you're an idiot. What kind of a dummy would think that the teal could beat the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets? Why are you won wearing three nothing. a thong on the C-train? Rhett, take the teal thong. Well, first on, put like a robe on. For it. Then get that teal thong off. Oh, I got a teal shirt I was going to wear yesterday for Easter. You wear it tonight around the tube. Although you probably did you, paint, able... did you paint your eggs for Easter? Oh, yeah, we got the eggs. Yeah, got them all. <laughs> the uh, the teal game will be happening a little bit earlier. Note the unusual start time for the Flames: seven thirty Monday I start. Noticed that yeah. seven thirty, Rat. So you can get a little bit of teal in before you and I do afterburner tonight on this very YouTube, Spotify, Appley, wherever you're taking this program in. Afterburner tonight. No boom. Sends boom. I'll be watching, though. Sure I'm you will. Sure. I don't miss it. Should be sleeping, but he'll probably be hate-watching Afterburner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Flames lose 7 nothing. He watched every minute. <laughs> uh, okay. The opposite of, you know, the standings and the schedule. What about the bottom here? This has been quite something. The Ducks called up their AHL backup the other day to play against Phoenix. How are we doing in the old Bedard territory? So this is projected points. So, again, this is a guess at how these clubs finish. Chicago a slight edge over Columbus, Anaheim third, and then a bit of a drop, San Jose to Montreal. We also have the bottom of the standings if you want the non-projected, but actual. Marty St. Louis really screwed the Habs this year, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Convincing them they're a playoff team for two months. That's the difference right there. Oh, and look at that. Oh, they like Marty enough. They might give him Bedard. Yeah, fair enough. Look at the Hawks. Three wins. Take three wins away from, from those guys. Yeah, that's six points. Who does who that hurt more? The Flames or the Hawks, those I three mean, games? They, Jesus. They, again, they should have been in cahoots. They should have been cahooting. Not ideal. Why do we care about Connor Bedard, Rhett? Well, let's take a peek. Saskatchewan, Regina. Saskatoon, Regina, excuse me. Uh, in Saskatchewan. That's right. Wow. We are in Saskatchewon. Uh, oh, Rhett, yes. you, now you were confused about his travel plans. Is he back? Is he here? When's he going? Right. Are you going to be in Saskatoon tonight? No. WHL game of the year. I got a big show to do with you. Blades, Pats, Bedard, game seven tonight. Ooh, doctor. Oh, mama. Oh, baby. How many points has Bedard got? Does well, it's funny you'd ask that. This overblown top prospect mm -hmm. happens to be nearly double the second highest point total in the WHL playoffs, who happens to be his line mates. <laughs> Let's go to the... Pat's scoring leaderboard, which happens to be the WHL, the WHL scoring WHL, yeah. leaderboard. Yeah. Bedard's been very, very good. 19 points through six games. And it's not... It's over His line mates are second and third in WHL playoff scoring. Don't yeah. draft him uh, NHL teams. And he's... Uh, not Bedard. Eight the, goals. The, the line mates. That's it, right. He, they do nothing. Don't They're draft hiding. Greg Nemus. I was just going to say, you don't want Greg Nemus? What the hell? There were some other guys. That, Ryan Ellis was good, though. He was on that team. Well, uh, he's a defenseman, so he didn't. Oh, no, I get that, yeah. Oh, shit. He the scored for Anaheim was. last night. What the hell is mm -hmm. A line made of someone? He was on that uh, on that team with Taylor. Spitfires? Guys. Yeah. Okay. I'll think of it. We we'll have to look for it. That group boy scored five points for the Hiff. Rebels the other night. Calgary. Yeah, yeah Hitman. Boy. They go down in five. They're KO'd. So we'll wait and see what happens tonight. The last WHL game of round one for... A, that's probably a best opening round series. Blades and Pats, provincial rival, future first overall pick. 15 to 17,000 people packing the barn. <laughs> Love to Come see on. it. Uh, let's go to Toronto Blue Jays. Wild one yesterday as they wrap a set in Anaheim against the Halos. What is Spark doing? 
What um, is Kirk doing? Yeah, Kirk. That's like, that was, uh, yeah, had had the easy third out there in the extras. This was a wild, it was 6 nothing Angels. It's a laugh where they're going to win, right? Blue Jays storm back, grand slam, and then you get a 10-6 lead. It's laugher. It's going to, no way the Jays will this. Then uh, they blow a four-run lead in the bottom of the ninth. Ooh. Then they take a two-run lead in the top of the 10th, and wow. then they load the bases and get a full count against Shohei Otani, where a base hit would have won the game back the other way for the Angels. Whew. Make sure you're you're taking uh, gravel before you watch these Jays games. Some massive swings and momentum here. Whew. Speaking of baseball, the craziest outcome of a baseball game maybe ever occurred in the minors over the weekend. Rhett, I want you to feast your eyes on a no-hit loss. No. The Chattanooga Lookouts, seven. The Rocket City Trash Pandas, five. Damn. Trash Charlotte, man. zero hits, seven runs. Rocket City Trash Pandas, six hits, five runs. You no-hit a team that got seven runs against you and you lost? How? Yeah. It's it's not easy to do. Where's Rocket City? Yeah. Yeah. Your, does your kid have tryouts in Rocket City? Is that an option We're, for next year? We haven't thought much about Rocket City, but it's a place it's a we should spot. With a name like the Trash Pandas. Guys weekend. I feel like that. Let's go. Watch the baseball. Be. We love baseball. Masters weekend, fellas. Rhett, how was it? How much did you get? Did you find yourself dozing away on the couch? It was a weird Saturday yeah. ruined by rain that we saw, but they got it all in on Sunday with a lot of golf. I didn't get as much as I wanted, but I was content with my intake. Yep. Proud of you? Yeah. Dean, you weren't uh, delivering a new child to the world with uh, the woman that you live with. So did where was your master's intake? You famously loved that first one. It was, it, it didn't line up well for me, I'll be honest. I was pretty much nothing until Sunday, but there happened to be a lot of golf on Sunday, Lots more than golf. half an 18 and then the full 18. And now we're here, half of there. Hour here. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. John Rom. Let's have a look. The big Spaniard, his second major. He's the first European ever to win a U.S. Open and a Masters. He's really good. He's very, 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 very good. So and I've heard. Brooks Kapka. Oh, Brooksy. Uh, Oops. Good guy. Uh, didn't like the pace of play, but no one really liked his play, he was at dash 13 at one point for this tournament, and there he is at minus eight. Uh, it turned out to be Rom by a mile when he started way behind this in is, round four. This is, it was a very entertaining a collapse, a very good tournament for the live golfers despite the collapse from Kapka. Phil Mickelson, the oldest player to finish top five in Masters history at almost 53 years of age. A lot of the live guys made the cut and played well, and there's some credibility heading that way. A lot of people saying, well, who are they playing? It's three rounds. Well, strength of field. Well, it's not going to be every tournament, but if you like a black hat and a villain, it was live got a little credibility. It was a good tournament for the live golfers. How did the kid do? What happened to the kid? Uh, Bennett Sam Bennett, the amateur. Not the offensive zone penalty. Play him on all four lines, straight him to Florida for two seconds. Not no, that guy, different guy. Right. Uh, fell off at the end a bit. There was a lot of moaning about pace of play with, I believe, him and Patrick Cantlay, who were the group uh, just in front. Here is the post-Tiger generation. Brooks, four majors. Rory, four majors. Spieth, three majors. Morikawa, two majors. Justin Thomas, two majors. John Rahm now has two as well. And that doesn't even mention Scotty Scheffler, who might even be the generation below the, below the Tiger generation. I don't know. Either way, golf's been pretty fun lately. And those are all... Mega studs. This isn't just dusters wheeling in and winning titles. Too bad Tiger had to limp off. Yeah, he looked, uh, he looked beat, the poor guy. And we got a winner to announce. Look at this. Uh, 521 uh, teams got in. 521, fellows. And your winning lineup is right in front of your eyes. B V I. Bobby Van Imp. Uh, That's right. Uh, Bob Van Imp. You had to have Rom or Kepka to be close. Uh, and your highest two scores got tossed. That's a pretty tidy lineup there. Wow. Well done. Uh, BVI, the winner, will have pick of the litter from our prizes for our master's pool. Could be round for two, it's like Forest. Could be golf bag and putter. Could be 150 bucks at Mad Rose Pub. Could be some barn burner gear. BVI is going to get first pick. Uh, your second place team, Parvert. And uh, third place team, Rory Slam, who didn't pick Rory. That was the key to not pick Rory. Uh, Tigers, Stripes, fourth as well. And they didn't pick Tiger. So there's your top four in the Masters pool. Thanks to all 521 who participated. There is not a smoker issue to deal with this year. I didn't want to, you know, burden you with that tough decision of what to do. You wouldn't be able to handle that controversy. No.
because it was very controversial the last time it happened. It kind of wasn't a big deal, and then it kept getting brought up and brought up and brought up, and then it was like, you know what? This Maybe this is a big deal. Where do that works? I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. You've lost Old me. place? Masters pool. Playoff pool. Or playoff NHL, pool. Yeah. And free dander. And the winner gets a smoker. One of those pellet uh, deals. Mm-hmm. Talks, Johnny talks a lot here, wins it. And then, uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, it's, uh, we're going to donate that back to Can't Kids really Park. have you uh, winning yeah, that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to have to uh, not let you have that. Oh, that's right. that's uh, and I didn't, uh, I was asked to join. And, and the thing, yeah, it was, up. Why don't you join? Hey, we'd love to get you guys involved. You guys get in there. People really like that. And uh, uh, yeah, still, uh, yeah. free to enter, right? It was not a, mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's not like anybody was out money, but still, yeah, optics, bad optics. Yeah. <laughs> we should have. How was your team, Dean? Dean, where'd you finish? I don't remember. Obviously, I didn't win. Did you put one in? Probably not. Okay, retro. <laughs> I was like, oh, you put one in? Jeez, that's right. I can't remember my passwords. No. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good to get emails on this phone. Okay, fair enough. And we'll move along. Finally, we needed an update. It's been a while. We have uh, spotted Dancing Boomer again in his weekend travels. Oh, you guys travels. Give, me, give me space. He was back in his native Manitoba. Damn look at this. You, you paparazzi. And look at he's He's got his, his, his old sports casting jacket on here. Let's crank it up. Yeah. Dancing that's Boomer. Here we go. Tie on. Yeah, short tie. Hip thrust. I did a lot of stretching. You know, how do you dance with the jacket? Looks really good. Cool. There you go. Get that thing to fly off. Make sure you don't lose that though. It's my favorite tie. Oh, Hulkamania. Oh, of course. Look See? at this. You know what? The fans love that. It See? gets a big pop. It does? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I got another one. And then you just kind of keep going. See? Oh, oh wow. How many? Because now it's funny, right? Because you keep. Think it's like those uh, dolls. How was Winnipeg? Still snowing? So great. Yeah, very cold. Yeah, okay. yeah, a lot of snow. So uh, great update from everyone on the weekends. There's your Pinder Report on Monday. There you go. Pinder Report brought to you by Village Honda, Northwest Auto Mall, online at villagehonda.com. You're safe. You can do it. Clean your car. Detailing packages starting at just $79.95. Clean off winter. Book your detailing today at your dealership for life. Village Honda in the Northwest. Automall.